Praise the Lord, dear people. Previously on Sunday, we have read Leviticus chapter 22 in depth. In the continuation of the previous previous one, Leviticus chapter 21, some of the regulations prescribed for the priest, the conduct of regulation for the priest, we have read that, and also we have read some of the offering which are accepted and not accepted. That also we have read. So many things we have seen previously. The person who becomes unclean have no part to take in the holy offering of the Lord offered by the priest to the Lord in the tabernacle and who who after in unclean condition are not allowed to take the offering from the Lord and also we have seen the daughter who is married to another he may be the priest she may be the priest daughter only she is not allowed to take the part of that in that offering which he is making the bread which they are going to eat they are not allowed to eat that bread the daughter it may be or anything if he is defiled by touching any unclean thing then also he is not allowed to eat that we have seen so many things like that and while giving the sacrifice a bull or calf any animal it should be without blemish without any defect if it has any defect then they are going to not offer it in front of the lord that also we have seen any defect it may be having or anything else that things they are going not going to offer in front of the lord only a perfect one, a perfect which has nothing defect, no blemish, nothing. That only they are going to offer. That also we have seen in anybody going to anybody's funeral and defiling themselves. Then also they are going not to eat, discharge of semen. That all things we have seen. By any means, if you are a priest, you are unclean, you should not go in the, inside the sanctuary, offer anything to the Lord or eat from that offering. That is an abomination in front of the Lord that you have not to do. And also we have seen that animals which you want to choose or which have not to choose according to Lord, nothing should have any blemish or any defect or anything before offering it to the Lord. It should be perfect. Any animal it should be perfect. No limb short, no limb long, any eczema, eye disease, nothing it should have. All should be perfect from all over the body. It should be perfect and perfect only. That all we have seen previously on Sunday. Hey, bro, come here. that we have seen previously on Sunday, that all things we have seen previously on that Sunday. Today we are going to read Leviticus chapter 23. Before that, we have to ask God in prayer that God may help us to understand the scriptures which we are reading today so that we will read from the scriptures and understand it and get the wisdom from the God. That God may help us to understand the scriptures which we are reading today. Before that, that's why we are going to pray. So before that, we will continue some time in prayer to ask God to help us with the wisdom and understanding which we require to understand the scriptures. Our Heavenly Father, as previously on Sunday, you help us to understand the scriptures in Leviticus chapter 22, my Father, helping us to understand everything. A priest, what, what precautions or what, what rules is applicable to him before offering to you and before eating the holy offering in your temple, my Father. And also we have seen the offerings which are accepted and not accepted. Today also in continuation with that, we are going to look at some of the feasts in Leviticus chapter 23. Before going through the chapter, help us to read the chapter quickly, understand it carefully and gain some wisdom and life lessons from it also, my Father. In the precious name of Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. His father talks to him and he Leviticus chapter 23 Feasts of the Lord And the Lord spoke to Moses saying Speak to the children of Israel and say to them The feasts of the Lord which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations These are my feast. So all the feasts which are to be followed by the people of Israel And the priests also that God is telling to Moses To tell to Aaron and his sons and to all the people The Sabbath Six days you shall work Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the solemn rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work on it. 
It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. The Sabbath also is accounted as a feast at that time. They will rejoice in the Lord, worship Him and make some some nice nice foods and uh, celebrate each other by sharing their foods to their neighbors and celebrating in joy. Like a simple picnic it is the seventh day, the Sabbath day, the rest of the day and after that they are going to worship before, after that they are going to celebrate. Means all joy, joy only at that day, rejoicing every time. The Passover and unleavened bread. These are the feast of the Lord, holy convocations which you shall proclaim at their appointed time. On the fourteenth day of the first month, at the twin light is the Lord's Passover. And on the fifteenth day of the month is the feast of unleavened bread. So, after first seven days, means another seven days will come, no? second Sabbath. Then they are going to celebrate the Passover festival and after one day, means on the 15th day they are going to celebrate the unleavened bread, festival of unleavened bread. Means the bread which don't have any yeast to make it bake. Like simply it is like plain, no rising up, only a flat roti line. That's it. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. But you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. For seven days, the seventh day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. The Feast of First Fruits And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, Now the Passover and unleavened bread over, the Sabbath over, now the feast of first fruits. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give to you and reap its harvest, reap its harvest, then you shall bring the chef of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. Means anybody who have grown something in his field and is reaping them means harvesting them. After reaping them, when harvest will come, they will reap because it is grown, it will fall down and waste away. That's why they are going to cut that and store that grain somewhere in the food store. For that, when you reap it, what you shall do? Then you shall bring the chef of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. The first thing which you reap, that you shall bring it to the priest. The priest shall take it. He shall wave the chef before the Lord to be accepted on your behalf. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it, and you shall offer on that day when you wave the chef a male lamp of the first year without blemish as a burnt offering to the Lord. It is a grain offering, shall be two tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, an offering made by fire to the Lord. For a sweet aroma and its drink offering shall be of wine, one fourth of a hill. You shall eat neither bread nor fresh grain nor fresh grain until the same day that you have brought an offering to your God. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations in your Delhi. A lamb also they have to bring with the first fruit offering which they have brought. A chef of anything they are going to bring it to priest. The priest will wave it. A lamb also they are going to bring. He shall wave the chef before the Lord to be accepted on your behalf. On the day after the Sabbath the priest shall wave it. And you shall offer on that day. When you wave the chef, a male lamp of first year without blemish as a burnt offering to the Lord. Its grain offering shall be two tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, an offering made by fire to the Lord. For a sweet aroma and its drink offering shall be a fine one fourth of a ton. Grain offering also there, mixed oil offering, a sweet aroma also has to produce. And a first fruit offering, a lamp also is accepted here. This is the feast of first fruits. Means feast means a festival of first fruit. When they are cutting their first thing, anything in their land, means they are getting the salaries like that. In this present generation, they are going to bring the first salary, the tenth, in this return like that only, the tenth of that, and bring it to God. At that time, they do not have any money or currency or salaries. That's why whatever they grow in that, they are going to bring one bundle, first bundle, which they are cutting, and bring it to the priest. The priest shall wave it as giving thanks to the Lord for giving them a nice heart. The Feast of the Weeks And you shall count for yourself from the day after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the chef of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be completed. Seven Sabbaths shall be completed. Means it is in one month four Sabbaths, after that three Sabbaths, then it will be completed. Means one month, after that more three weeks. 
count 50 days to the days after the seventh Sabbath. Then you shall offer a new grain offering to the Lord. You shall bring from your habitation two wave loaves, leaves of two tenths of an ephah. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven. They are the first fruits to the Lord. And you shall offer with the bread seven lambs of the first year without blemish. One young bull and two rams, they shall be a burnt offering to the Lord. With their grain offering and their drink offering, an offering made by fire for a sweet aroma to the Lord. Then you shall sacrifice one kid of the goats as a sin offering and two male lambs of the first year as a sacrifice of peace offering. The priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits as a wave offering before the Lord. With the two lambs they shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. And you shall proclaim on the same day that it is a holy convocation to you. You shall do no customary work on it. It shall be a statue forever in all your dwellings. Throughout your generations when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of your field. When you reap, nor shall you gather any gleaning from your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and for the stranger. I am the Lord your God. And for the feast of wheat, when you do harvest in that, when some shall fall down, you should not clean that, you should simply leave that on the ground and go for the poor. The feast of the trumpets. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and saying, in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. In the feast of trumpets it is, you shall blow the trumpets on that day only. That's why the feast of trumpets it is called the day of atonement. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Also the tenth day of the seventh month shall be the day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation for you. You shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. And you shall do no work on that same day, for it is the day of atonement, to make atonement for you before the Lord, your God. For any person who is not afflicted of soul on that same day, he shall be cut off from his people. And any person who has thus who does any work on that same day, that person I will destroy from among his people. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a state you forever throughout your generation. In all your dwellings it shall be to you a Sabbath of Solomon rest. And you shall afflict your souls on the ninth day of the month. At evening, from evening to evening, you shall celebrate your Sabbath. This is the day of atonement. It means they are becoming ready to meet to God. That's why the day of atonement is celebrated cleaning everything and becoming ready.